Well, good evening, friends, and welcome to what is our last edition of Virtual Vespers Together. Um, if you're joining live, I hope the sort of delay uh, to this evening isn't affecting you too much. And for those of you watching later on, uh, this was broadcast on Thursday evening rather than Wednesday night. We've had a lot going on in our lives. I've had a lot going on in mine. I don't know if I've ever received so many texts or phone calls or emails, but they're all a sign of something that I, I want to talk to you just briefly about this evening. Something that's been on my heart and on my mind a lot lately, and that's the idea uh, of change. As you can see behind me, uh, a lot has changed even here in my office. Um, I say my office, it's mine for a week and a half, and then we begin to pray. I'll be praying with you, and you as a church begin to pray for the next person who'll come to occupy this office. But as you can tell, a lot a lot has changed, as all of these books are now in boxes strewn around on the floor, uh, stacked up in the corner, and more boxes still to come that will hold these books. And, and as I've been packing them away, I, I've... I've been able to sort of relive a few memories. Many of these books I've had since college. Some are new, some I had in seminary and others. And I've been able to open the pages and see on the inside where I used to sign my name in the year or sometimes the month in the year that I bought the books. I've been able to see notes that I've written about certain things. Sometimes I open a book and a note falls out from someone or from myself. And it's been really, really interesting to note the, the way those things have changed. But things are changing here. Things are changing in our home. Uh, this week has been a flurry of people in and out viewing our home as it's now for sale. In fact, Sally and the boys are, are down in South Alabama with, uh, spending some time with grandparents again to be sort of out of the way of these folks who are coming in and out. But our house looks different. There's places where furniture once stood. Now that furniture is sold or out in the garage, the garage, which once used to be this sort of neat place where I did some work and Sally parked her car, is now this unrecognizable mass of, of boxes and other things. Change is, is coming to our family. Change is coming to this church. As, as I leave and we pray together for the next person to come, change will inevitably come in the form of a new pastor, in the form of an interim season for reflection and discernment. But change is also very present among us in our culture, in our country. And I know for a lot of people, that change in particular can be frightening, it can be scary, can be unnerving a little bit. Mostly, I think, because when we hear the word change, it, it means that something that once was will no longer be. And sometimes I think we, when we think about it that way, we think about that which is changing, that which is going away, and look at the ways maybe subconsciously that we've benefited from it, maybe the ways that we've taken part in it. And as it's going away, maybe there's a fear within us that, gosh, if it's going away, if it's bad, does that mean, does that mean that I'm bad, that I'm wrong, that I'm a part of whatever that was? And so when that fear kind of bubbles up in us, uh, we, we resist the change. We, we, we don't like it. In church, uh, in faith circles, I often hear that especially about God. And people will say very quickly, well, God doesn't change or the Bible doesn't change. And I don't think those sentiments are wrong. However, I think the way that we mean them may be somewhat, somewhat off. When we think about the fact that God doesn't change, we're usually quoting passages like this from the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 6. For I, the Lord, do not change. That's not even the whole verse. That's just what we hear. For I, Yahweh, I, the Lord, do not change. There it is in black and white ink on the page. But I think it's important to remember when the prophet Malachi is relaying these words, he's telling them to a people 
disrupted. Are people wondering if God is on their side anymore? Does God care for them anymore? And the prophet says, well, the Lord hasn't changed. God still cares for you. God still upholds you. God still loves you. God's going to see you through. God hasn't changed. What's changed, or what changes in us, what changes around us, is our perspective. The way that we understand God, the way we understand Scripture, the way we understand the world. I think about this in a number of ways, <clears throat> but one that came to my mind today uh, uh, was from a, one of my favorite television shows the last few years, a show called Mad Men. Maybe you've seen uh, this show. Uh, it won a lot of awards, and some of it's maybe not the best for church folks, but still, it was one of my uh, favorite shows. I would watch it uh, when it would come on in syndication and record it sometimes to watch it all the way through, but there was... One particular scene, it was just a passing thing. When, when one of the main characters, Roger Sterling, suffered a second heart attack. Now, this is the 1960s. And as he was there, uh, I think he was in the hospital, maybe back at work right after. He said, I don't understand what happened. Uh, after my first heart attack, I did everything that the doctor said to do. You know, I ate butter, I drank the cream, I did. And I remember sitting there hearing him say that and go, that's stupid. <laughs> like who who would do that after a heart attack? Who would ingest all of this sort of thing? These fatty things we know now are bad for our hearts. But then I remember ah this was this is set in the 1960s when people even doctors thought well this makes sense this is the way it works. Did our hearts change? Did the fatty content of cream and butter change? No. What changed was our understanding. To give you a more, maybe, silly, childlike way of thinking about it, I remember when I was a kid, I was riding in the back seat of the car uh, with my stepbrother, Philip. We were on the way home from uh, visiting family or something, and it was night. And we were watching out of the window the full moon. And I remember uh, my stepbrother, uh, Philip, said to me, You know, E.T. lives on the moon. And I thought, what? What? He said, yeah, if you look at it, if you really look at it, it looks like E.T.'s head upside down, and that means E.T. lives on the moon. Now, he may have been joking to me, but I was young enough, and in my mind, I thought, well, yeah, that makes perfect sense. But now, as a 36-year-old man, I know way better than that. Why? Did the moon change? No. What changed? Well, my understanding of it. I've... I've read about it. I've seen pictures. I know my understanding and my intellect has changed. So why is it that we're so apprehensive about change in our culture, in our world, and in our churches? Well, it's because, again, change means something else has to go away to make room for something new. Change sometimes means that we have to pack old boxes and leave behind old books. Sometimes change means that we have to, to let go a little bit of ourselves, a little bit of what makes us who we are, admit a little bit of what it took to get to where we are, that maybe it wasn't all us, maybe it wasn't all hard work, maybe there was a little bit of luck, maybe there was a little bit of privilege involved. Sometimes change is, is difficult because, not because the action and the work it takes to do it, but because of what we think it says about who we are. But friends, I believe what the scripture says, that God doesn't change. But I believe also that the scriptures are always calling us to change calling us to change more and more into the likeness of the one who doesn't change. And sometimes that means our understanding has to change. Sometimes it means our perspective has to change. Sometimes it means we have to do the hard work, the hard work of the change within us. Sometimes it means we have to bear the hard work of the change around us. Sometimes it means that we have to 
wrestle with and come to grips with the idea that change change really is good that change can be better that sometimes what's coming is better than what we're leaving that sometimes it's hard to get through what's here to get to what's there and sometimes it means when we think about God as the one who doesn't change that maybe maybe we're misunderstanding and that we need we need to be polished a little more that we need our perspectives to be sharpened a little more as we think more about who God is and what God does in this world I know that's proven true for me I thought that especially today as as I was pulling one of these books off on this shelf right here the very first Bible that I ever really read to pull it off the shelf to look at its binding to read the pages an old King James just reference Bible and the red letters that once when I first read that book the way that I I read it the way that I read that Bible was like I would read any other book to just pick it up and read its words and say well that's what this is that's what that does but to pick it up and read it now to know the weight of those words to know the 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 agony in some of those pages to know the joy in some of those verses the hope that encompasses the whole thing it changes how I read so much so friends, what I, I want to leave with you this evening in our last Vespers together, I want to leave with you a simple notion, a thought that whatever change may come, so long as we're attentive to the Spirit, so long as we're willing to allow that change to start within us, so long as we're willing to to be attuned to the one who doesn't change but our perspective our perception of God does that it's going to be okay in fact it's going to be better it's hard to see now it's hard to see now in times of maybe local disruption local sorrow it may be hard to see now in cultural and national disruption, global disruption. It may be hard to see through, through protests and riots and viruses and pandemics and political division. It may be hard to see now. But I think, I hope, I believe that whatever change is coming inevitably will be good because the one who brings it doesn't change just our understanding changes I pray yours does I hope mine continues and I pray as we all come together to worship in whatever ways we're able to pray to seek discernment and guidance that our hearts will not be so quick to flinch at this notion of change would you pray with me oh God as we come now to this time of prayer as we think Lord about all that lies ahead of us all this potential for change God we we ask that you keep our hearts open you keep our hands steady you keep us Lord focused on what it is you would have us to do and who it is you would have us to be. And Lord, as we end our time together tonight, we end it as we have always ended our Vespers, our Wednesday gatherings together, by praying the way that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. 
Amen. Friends, I hope to see you either in person this Sunday at 9 and at 1030. Remember, again, we'll be uh, practicing those social distance guidelines you can find on our website or uh, on one of the posts here. Uh, we encourage you to wear a mask or we'll provide those for you here. Uh, again, if in any way you feel at risk, if you don't feel comfortable coming, by all means, please uh, stay at home so you can join us in worship that way uh, through our live stream here and through the recorded uh, services we'll be posting on YouTube later. Until we see each other again, friends, thank you for being with us this evening, and I pray God blesses you for the rest of this week until we see one another again for worship and prayer. Amen.